So my bowl method video went viral on TikTok, Instagram, and YouTube. And you guys had a lot of questions, so I wanted to make a full length routine showing exactly what I do from start to finish. Now, my name is Sophie and I post about wavy hair care. I started caring for my waves about five months ago now and it's been such a fun journey learning what works best for my hair, what products work best, and I've absolutely loved sharing it with all of you guys. So thank you so much for being here with me. I also want to give a big thank you to Way for sponsoring part of this video. As you guys know, I love their products. And they have two very exciting new products that just came out that I'm going to be talking about a little bit later in the video. Now, the bowl method is one of my favorite ways to get frizz-free defined waves just like this. I use this method about every wash day and I love it because it gives really consistent results and it's pretty easy to do and doesn't take that much longer than a normal styling routine. So without further ado, let's get into it. So after the shower with literally no product on my hair, I fully rinse out my conditioner. I begin raking my hair forward to start the bowl method. I detangled my hair when my conditioner was in in the shower using my brush, so this should be easy to do. So after detangling my hair with my fingers, I go in with my leave-in conditioner. Lately, I've been a huge fan of the spray leave-ins. I find them a lot easier to use. I'm able to evenly coat my hair with the product while using less product than I would with a traditional leave-in conditioner, and that's something that's really important for wavy hair. If you follow a lot of Curly Girl Method tutorials, you'll see them using a lot of their hydrating products. So a lot of heavy leave-ins, a lot of heavy curl creams, and the reason for that is that curly hair tends to be drier than wavier hair. The problem is, is that hydrating products are heavy and so there's a huge possibility of it just weighing down your texture. So if you have wavy hair, you really want to be mindful of how much of your leave-in conditioner or how much of your curl cream you're using. Now instead of using a brush here, again I'm just working it through my hair using my fingers. There's nothing wrong with using a brush, you definitely can, especially if your hair knots easily, you'll probably have a better time with it. But I had watched one of India Baston's videos a couple weeks ago where she talked about how when she doesn't use a brush after the shower, she notices that her wave clumps are a lot better. So I've been trying that out for the past couple weeks and I've really been a huge fan. I have noticed a little bit of a difference. It might be placebo effect, but I'm a fan and finger detangling works just fine for me. When I'm detangling, I'm being extra mindful of the back of my head. You really want to make sure that the back of your hair is fully detangled. Otherwise, when you flip right it up later, you're going to have a bunch of knots back there. After my leave-in is thoroughly worked in, I go in with my curl cream. And again, you don't need a super heavy one. You just want one that's gonna really add some nutrition and hydration to your hair. This is roughly about how much I use. Now I'm gonna speed this up because you guys saw how I did it with the leave-in conditioner, but I'm gonna talk a little bit about why we apply these products before the bowl method and why we're not using our gel or our mousse. Our leave-in conditioner and our curl cream are our hydrating products. These products work to really hydrate and nourish your hair, so you want them to penetrate every single hair strand. On the other hand, your mousses and your gels are your hold products, so those work by coating the outside of your wave clumps by forming a nice little shell around it to keep those hairs together. Dunking in water would work against us forming that shell, so that's why we use those products after the bowl method. So now I'm going to start my dunking process. I use about three cups of water in my bowl. You can use more or less depending on your hair length and your hair density. Essentially, you want enough so that when you dunk your hair, your hair is fully covered in water, but you don't want too much that it just feels like you're taking another shower just using a bowl. Now, as I'm squeezing my hair, I'm just lifting my hair directly up towards my scalp. You don't really want to move your hands around a lot when you're doing this because that's just going to break up your wave clumps and probably cause some frizz. At the top, I firmly squeeze to get out some water and I lightly pulse my hands a little bit just to help really squish in that product and to really get rid of as much water as I can with each squeeze. Now, as I dunk, you're gonna see me shake my head. That just helps with root flexibility. It helps unstick the roots from the top of my head. Now, I dunk around four times and you might be wondering, Sophie, why do you need to do it so many times? Every time you dunk, a little bit of your product is going back into the water. And while that might sound like a bad thing, the good thing is that when you dunk again, it helps distribute that diluted product onto parts of your hair that weren't covered previously. With each dunk, my product is getting applied more evenly to my hair and I can literally feel it as I'm squeezing. So by the fourth time I dunk, my hair feels really nice and slippery and I know that enough product has been applied to my hair. You want to dunk as many times as it takes to get that nice slippery, smooth, seaweed-like hair. And every single one of your wave clumps should look like that and you shouldn't have any wet frizz. Do you have wet frizz? That is a hydration issue with your strands. Product isn't going to fix that right now. And I'd suggest evaluating your shampoo and conditioner and also incorporating a deep conditioning mask weekly. After I've squeezed as much water out as I possibly can, I begin to microplop my hair using my microfiber towel. This is incredibly sped up because it's really boring to watch, but I take my time here. 
I gently scrunch my hair up towards my scalp, but I very firmly squeeze it to really get as much water out as I can. And this is when I apply my mousse. If you like using gel, you can do that here too. This is just basically the step where you put in your hold product. For my mousse, I lightly glaze it over the ends of my hair before scrunching up to really work the product in. And I'm a big fan of mousses because they're really lightweight, so they don't weigh down my texture, but they still give me a nice amount of hold. And as you can see, I have some nice frizz-free wave clumps. Next up, I plop my hair, and this helps start the drying process without gravity weighing down my waves. Using a t-shirt, I lay it out on a flat surface with the top of the shirt closest to me. I then slowly lower my hair down so my hair is getting piled at the top of my head. I then grab the bottom of the t-shirt and flip it over the back of my head and use the arms of the t-shirt to tie a little knot to secure this at the base of my head. And I'm just using a regular old cotton t-shirt here. You don't need anything fancy. And this is what it looks like all wrapped up. I leave it in for about 15 minutes. I don't do any longer because it really just squashes out my wave pattern and really reduces my volume. During this time, I'll typically do my makeup, have some coffee, respond to emails, or whatever else I need to be doing during that day. The benefit of this is that it helps start our drying process before diffusing, so it'll really speed up the diffusing process, which is something that we all want because that can definitely take a little bit of time. So I'll be back in about 15 minutes to show you what the diffusing process looks like, but before that, I'm going to talk to you about Way's new products because they're really cool. Healthy hair care is something that I care a lot about, and something new that I've been focusing on is actually scalp care. Way recently released their scalp serum and their Thick and Full supplements, and these are what I've been using to care for my scalp. Their Thick and Full supplements are a one-a-day supplement that promotes thicker, fuller, and healthier hair. And they're vegan and gluten-free as well. Now, I like to take mine in the morning, and I keep it next to my sink so I don't forget, because consistency is key with any form of supplement. And best of all, these don't have any flavors, so they're really easy to take. Their scalp serum can be used day or night, and it has skincare-inspired ingredients like hyaluronic acid to promote a healthy, hydrated, and balanced scalp. Like all whey products, it smells so good, and it's also really easy to use. You just add a few drops all over your scalp. I like using this at night before bed because it makes my nighttime routine feel super fancy. And since I started using it, I've already noticed a huge difference in how my scalp feels. It's a lot less sensitive and it feels a lot more hydrated. Since starting these products, I've also noticed that my hair is shedding less, and that's one of the many benefits of caring for your scalp. Grow all the way with Way Scalp Serum and Thick and Full Supplements. Go to theway.com and use code Sophie Marie for 15% off your entire order. That is 15% off your entire order at theway.com using code Sophie Marie. All right, so it's been about 15 minutes and now we're going to start the diffusing process. Now for anyone who doesn't know, this attachment is what's called the diffuser and you just attach it to your normal hair dryer. So if you already have a hair dryer, you can find diffuser attachments at places like Target or Walmart and they're universal attachments that will just slide on to the little nozzle of your hair dryer. Now since this can take a little while and I diffuse upside down, I like to sit down for this because then I can balance my head on my hand as my hair is flipped over my head and we're not gonna get tired standing up for 25 minutes bent over. A very important thing to note is that I do not flip my head right side up until my hair is dry. So I take my plop out upside down and then use the t-shirt to just squeeze any extra water and as you can see, I have some really nice frizz-free defined waves going on right now. Now I'm gonna start by hover diffusing using high speed and medium heat. The more we touch our hair when it's drying, the more frizz we're gonna get. So I like to start with hover diffusing until a cast begins to form so I don't end up with a bunch of frizz and I don't break up all of my nice wave clumps. So once that nice cast has started to form, I move on to pixie diffusing. With the diffuser off, I'm gonna gather my hair into the bowl, scrunch it up towards my head, turn the diffuser on, hold it there for about 20 seconds, and then turn the diffuser off before lowering it back down. The key here is that air is only blowing when your hair is scrunched up inside the bowl of the diffuser, and that's what helps this method cut down on frizz. So I do this all over my head, scrunching up and down, up and down. Since my hair is on the thicker side, I also section it out here, so grabbing the top layer of my hair and putting that in the bowl to dry it separately. And once it's about 80% dry, I start flipping my head from side to side. But instead of a flipping motion, it's a little bit more of a rolling side to side. And then I keep pixie diffusing just as before. The rolling motion is really key here since it allows each wave clump to move seamlessly past another. This is what prevents tangles and is why I don't end up with a rat's nest at the back of my head after styling upside down. This whole process takes around 15 to 20 minutes, but it's definitely worth taking your time here since the results are really worth it. So checking to make sure it's dry, I then gently roll my head to flip my hair upright. Standing up, I start by diffusing my roots before moving back to hovering a little bit just to make sure all the water is completely out of my hair. 
At this point, my hair has a cast and it's at least 95% dry, so I'm not worried about frizz and I'm not worried about tangles. So as much movement here as possible is what I go for since that really helps with the volume. You can see that my part here falls pretty naturally, but if you like setting a hard part, this would be the time to do it. Since your hair is dry, you can touch it as much as you want right now and move all your wave clumps around until they're exactly where you want them to be. Once my hair is parted how I like, I typically go through and do a really quick pixie diffuse across all the parts of my hair. We really want to make sure our hair is completely dry before we break our cast since that's what's going to give us multi-day definition. And as you can see, I have very, very little frizz right now. That's because after the bowl method, I didn't have any wet frizz. So since I applied my mousse and it formed a cast, I didn't develop any frizz during the drying process. And that's the key part. So this is what my hair looks like once it's dry. It looks a little bit wet right now, but that's because of the hair cast. So a cast forms when you're using a mousse or a gel, and it's essentially like the hard little coating that happens around each of your wave or curl clumps. Now, typically that's why people don't like using mousses or gels because it leaves their hair feeling hard and crunchy, but you can actually break the cast by scrunching out your hair. And I like using an oil for that. Taking a nice lightweight hair oil, I take a couple pumps on my hand. You don't want it too much here. Oops. Uh, you don't want it too much. Um, I rub it between my hands and then I'm just going to scrunch up and squeeze my hair to really help break up that cast and this is what's going to give you nice soft touchable waves. So pulsing a little bit at the top here to really break those bonds of that cast. Look at that bounce, it's soft, it's movable and you can see it's a lot different from the other side that hasn't been scrunched out yet. So going through, because there's still some parts that have not been broken out yet, you just keep on scrunching. And the oil isn't necessary. I like using it for extra shine. Um, but ideally, if you're using the right amount of mousse for your hair, you should not have to use an oil. Doing the other side. So again, just a couple little pumps of the oil and scrunch it up. Now, if you're using the right amount of mousse or gel for your hair, you shouldn't have to use an oil here. Your cast should break pretty easily. If it doesn't, try using a little less next time. Cool, and then the last thing I do is just shake out my roots. So I tilt my head back and really just shake out my roots. This helps bring in some extra volume and it loosens up any mousse that ended up anywhere near my roots. And there we have it. So this is what my hair looks like from the side. Nice and soft, nice and bouncy, a lot of movement. This is the back. And that's my bowl method routine. I hope this video helped. Please let me know in the comments if you have any questions. If you wanna see any specific videos for me, please let me know that as well.